Well, Russians okay. and their bank accounts put into swift panic. Russia's ruble plummeting, losing 25 percent in a week after the U.S. and several other Western allies cut off much of its trade, its investment and other banking capabilities in a slew of sanctions. Join me now is Joel Shulman. He is the founder and CIO of Entrepreneur Shares LLC. He's also a former World Bank consultant, knows Russia well. Joel, how big a hit is Russia's economy taking right now? Well, it's taken a massive hit, but we've got to remember the sanctions have never been performed in a country this size before. We've also got to remember that in the case of um, Russia, 63 percent of their um, their trade is is really is in oil. And their biggest trading partner is China, which uh, is is being very supportive. We also have to remember that on January 6th, they essentially took over, helped uh, in a similar situation with Kazakhstan, which was the 10th largest oil producer. So arguably, Russia has moved from third to first in terms of production with oil, if you combine that with Kazakhstan, and that oil prices have gone up. So they're yeah. going to be, and, and this is outside the sanctions. So the sanctions aren't hitting the oil, which is a primary revenue generator for them. But it, no question, sanctions have hurt. And, and we should keep in mind that, that Russians right now are, it's almost impossible to convert your rubles into dollars. And that means that people overnight have lost about a quarter of their savings. So it, when you think of, right. of Putin's stability as, as a leader to stay in his position, the pushback from the people of Russia is mounting, no? Right. No, no questions. It's, it's, it's significant. There are a lot of people also uh, who receive income from the U.S. So, for example, in many cases, and there's a company, for example, by the name of EPAM, which does outsourcing to Eastern Europe, including Russia and so forth. Many companies like this. And these people have been hit hard because, you know, how are they going to get the transfers of funds and so forth? Um, some of these companies are being hit hard. And we've got to remember there's repercussions throughout the world. So companies that were trading particularly the U.S. companies and other European country, uh, companies that are trading with Russia are now going to yeah. be uh, in a quandary. How are they going to make payments? So this has really uh, created a, a, a tough problem for everyone. Joel, very quickly, last question. But they, we, we hear a lot about the $650 billion they have in, in reserves and hard currency reserves, gold and stuff like right. that. Uh, is, is, are now, is it difficult to impossible for them to get a hold of that because of these sanctions? Yeah. Or can they still yeah. find ways of getting through to that? No, no question. You know, that $650 billion right now, from what I understand, is being frozen. Now, some of the oligarchs that they've targeted specifically, some of the rich ones, probably converted much of their money into crypto years ago. And by the way, these sanctions are encouraging a shift for many of our enemies, including North Korea, Iran, um, and, and now Russia, you know, uh, to convert to the digital yuan, which has right. you know, been working on trying to get transfers. So we're going to see alternatives kind of put in place. And so, so right now, the $650 billion being frozen is going to be a problem for these people to, to access. But we also got to keep an eye on alternatives being created, like the digital yuan, and ha creating incentives for people to get away from SWIFT and the dollar going forward. Joel Shulman, good to see you, Joel. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.